This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Today on Know How, LED Clock Part 2. It's a Twitch show where we build, bend, break, and upgrade. I am Father Robert Baldessar. And I'm Brian Burnett. And for the next however many minutes it takes, we're going to take your database of knowledge and, and do eight table entries of that's, new stuff. That's right. We're going to upload the knowledge into your cloud of brain. I don't know where we're going to yeah, go with that know, one. No, no. Let's, yeah. let's just get into it. Now, last <laughs> week, we showed people the 3D design of this. This is our little... Know how Arduino clock using mm-hmm. LEDs, WS two eight one twos, and a, it's so a custom designed three D case. Yes, it is pretty, right? And and like I like I like the fact that next week we're going to show you how we do all the coding for all the different animations, the different modes, and of course how to keep proper time. Nice. But oh right, the one thing that the is one supposed, thing it's supposed to do. To do. Right. Go figure. But what we wanted to do today is we wanted to start the assembly of this part because there's really two discrete pieces of this. Mm-hmm. There's this, the ring. And then there's this, the, the base. base. And the yeah. base is what contains all the smarts and the power. The ring is what contains all the display elements. So okay. you, you really, you, you have two different projects here that we're just combining in the final episode. Right, right. Yeah. Well, let's, let's go again through the parts list because I know we, we covered it last week, but it, it bears mentioning so that you know what you need. The first thing, of course, is going to be the uh, WS281260 LED ring. Uh, the, again, the reason why this is important is because it sets the size. This mm-hmm. is the one non-negotiable in this ring because if you don't have enough space for that 60 LED ring, you cannot represent seconds. That makes sense. Yeah. And it comes in four pieces and then you solder it together? Right. And this thing's you know, 13 to $15 dollars depending on, on where you are in the world. Uh, the next bit are uh, 50 pieces of Greek, key, Greek Crete WS2812 <laughs> LEDs. Get these because these are the ones that are specifically sized for the enclosures that I've created. Right. Right. Okay. And um, I actually bought a hundred pack. It's it's a little cheaper. Uh, you're going to use these bad. a lot. We we only need 26 because when we're when we're doing a 24 hour time dis- uh, d- display, mm-hmm. we need five different time divisions. The first is seconds. That's the the ring. Right. Then we need minutes. So that's one to nine mm-hmm. because you don't have tw- ten. Nope. Nope. Uh, then you need minutes times 10, which needs another five, because mm-hmm. you can have 50-something minutes. Right. Then you need nine for hours, again, one to nine. And then you need two, because it's hours times 10. Right. So you need a total of 25 LEDs. Mm-hmm. We're actually going to be using 26, because the minute display that has uh, that you only need five, I, I actually use six. Just to keep it even? Just to make it look nice. Because this, yeah. I mean, it would look kind of weird. Weird if it was, like it was blacked out right there, yeah. Yeah, didn't, didn't like that. So, huh. uh, yeah, we've got one extra LED. Actually, we have two extra LEDs because on the 60 LED ring for yeah. the seconds, you never actually get to second 60 because that's a minute. That makes sense. I'm wondering, what if you did little circles instead of squares on here? Circles within circles. Uh, yes. Did you do that? Uh, I, I, I did a design like that and using those little uh, WS2812 rings that we had for the, the steampunk goggles. Yeah. It ended up there was a lot of wasted LEDs. Yeah. And the other problem with doing that is they are never in the right denomination. Ah, uh, yeah, I can see what you mean. Yeah. And it's, it's actually easier to tell the time if it's a square because you know if it's, if it's one full row, that's three. Three, that six, sense. nine. You know, three, six. I guess if you do want to read the clock, you should do that. <laughs> I know. If you want to make it actually useful for the thing that you you say you're making it for, yeah, right. you go with go with. I mean, when you first at a glance look at it, it seems like it's super complicated. But once you get the idea, it's it's not that bad. Right. Uh, you're also going to need some jumper wire. Like we showed this off last week. Super cheap. You can get a, a, a dual pack, 400 pieces of red and uh, and black. You'll see why we use this extensively. Hmm. It's the best way to make sure that uh, you know you don't short out your wiring. And again, I, I am using plastic. Uh, only because, in most cases, I'm going to be stripping away the plastic installation. For, for everything else, it's silicone wire. Right, right. We talked about that before where the plastic will melt and yeah. it will make you feel bad. And smell bad. And smell bad. And <laughs> probably give you and cancer. be bad. Yeah, don't do that. Uh, and, of course, the 30-gauge silicone wire, we've got a link for this. 
Uh, get yourself a bunch of this. I, I just bought something like 50 meters of each color mm -hmm. because I'm going to use it. Oh, and by the way, uh, we had several people comment during our uh, steampunk goggles episode mm -hmm. about this the, the piles of wire that we had. So <laughs> I was looking at these. You 3D printed some spools, huh? Uh, it's very poorly 3D printed. I, I, I wanted function. something that was fast. They function. Uh, these are actually two pieces, and what I did was I took the heat gun and I just melted the plastic in the middle to bind them together. It totally works. It does work. It totally works. It's a little ugly, but I mean, I just it keeps it nice and neat. So, what does that bring the grand total to for this project? Is this, for just buying the parts? Like, just buying the parts uh, like under with 30, with right? some extra, with some extra. So um, you're gonna have some extra pieces because it's more economical to buy like ten Arduinos and yes. five real time clocks. You're looking at a, like forty six dollars. Okay. Plus. Okay the 3D printed parts. Uh, and you will use an entire roll of filament. Okay. Uh, so yeah. that's like $25. Yeah, but a fun project. And if yeah. you got a 3D printer, you're probably looking for something to do with it. Precisely. Uh, there's other pieces you see here on the board like this. These are the Ubex. Uh, again, I'm using two because I want to supply power from both sides. This is the, uh, the power cable. And uh, of course, we've got our Arduinos, our diodes, our real-time clock and the resistors. The reason why we're not really matching those here is because this is part of the electronics, but it's the electronics for the base. Right. So we are not dealing with any of that on this episode here. It's just this plus our little individual WS2812 LEDs. We're just dealing with the pretty part of the clock today. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. By the way, uh, mm -hmm. I was not exaggerating when I said that this was the key to the build. This was the very first piece I designed because the first pieces I had were these. <laughs> and I, you wanted to do something with it. I wanted to do something nice. And I had so many different designs. If you go to my Twitter account, you see how many different prototypes I went through. Mm -hmm. I finally agreed on this. This exactly fits this ring. I mean, if you look at this. Snug. I, it's super snug. And it's designed to be snug because, again, I didn't want any glue. I didn't want mm -hmm. a whole lot of, uh, of fasteners. But if you put this in right, I mean, that's not going anywhere. Yeah, no, that's cool. I'm sure there's people out there who will just want that to 3D print yeah. for, the, for these pieces. Precisely. And, and you, could, you could take this design that I've given you, and you could, like, say, make a camera ring. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah and then just make your own little uh, diffusal for it. Yeah, if you go to the side view, Kara, you can actually see how the design actually looks at the bottom. So there's these holes, which gives you free access to the pads, the soldering pads, which, which you're going to need. And at the top of the bottom, there's also a divider. What that divider does is it keeps the ring from rotating. It cannot move mm -hmm. inside of here, which is, you don't want that because you're going to have wires in here, and if the ring moves at all, you can actually just scrape the wires off. Right, and also you have it set to every LED that's, what, five? Every five LEDs, it's a yellow LED, yep. so then you can, you know, understand where it is uh, second-wise. So it would be kind of lame if it <laughs> rotated in the frame. Right. Uh, the other things you're going to need for this, of course, you're going to need a soldering kit, because we're doing soldering. That includes... A, Everyone a, should have a soldering you kit. A soldering iron, you're going to need snips, you're going to need uh, uh, strippers. Mm -hmm. uh, helping hands would really, really help. <laughs> they take 10 too, yeah. Yeah, because if you don't have them, you're going to do... Is it difficult to solder yoga. between the pads on these? I mean, you don't have a ton of space. No, this is not nearly as hard as it is to solder the, the individual WS2812s. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you'll see the technique that I use to solder these in, in just a bit. Sure. But, um, you know, looking at this, this first part of electronics, if you do it right and you don't have a camera that's trying to film everything you do, yeah. you can probably do this entire frame in about 45 minutes to an hour. Not bad. Yeah. It does always make it difficult, huh, when you're trying to record it and keep your hands out of the shot? Well, it's not just record it. You want to make it interesting. If I had the same shot and just took slices of that same shot, people would get incredibly bored. So you have to keep moving the camera around, get better angles, zoom in, <laughs> zoom out. I'm such a perfectionist. You know what? We do it for you, folks. We do it for, for you. you. In there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking of doing it for you, we're going to show you exactly how you put this together in just a bit. But first, Brian, I want to take a moment to listen to these messages. Previously on Twit. I did bring something with me and I set off the metal detector. Oh, this is amazing. It was it's a gong! Oh. <laughs> Not a gun, it's a gong. I brought it with me. <laughs> she, they she were wondering. With the gong. Windows Weekly. You'll notice that we don't always ship everything that goes to insiders. And a lot of it is because they didn't test well. Many of our insiders are able to represent the people they help day to day. Because people say, oh yeah, I love this feature, it's awesome, but it's going to be very hard for people who I support to use. 
security now. There was a lawsuit which was accusing Facebook of tracking users' web browsing activity even after they logged out. However, U.S. District Judge in San Jose, California, dismissed the case because he said that the plaintiffs failed to show they had a reasonable expectation of privacy or that they suffered any realistic economic harm or loss. I'm happy to see that this didn't go any further. You know, these people just need to know how the Internet works. Twit. For help with the technology addiction problem, call 1-800-TWIT. Thank you. Scott, how did, how did you not come to wear the right shirt today? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get the memo. And we're back. Hey, Brian, are you ready for a little bit of a smoke and solder? Yes, I want to observe this. And we've learned if you smell chicken, stop. Stop. Yeah, just don't, just don't do that. <laughs> I'm impressed that you want, you want to solder here at this table. Usually we do it at the other one. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I did most of the hard work in front of the camera. So without further oh, yeah. ado, hey, Kara, press that magic button. Just as the frame of our LED clock began with the ring assembly, our soldering begins with the 60 LED ring comprised of four segments of 15 WS2812 LEDs each. We start our soldering session by tinning the pads on the LED ring segments, six per segment, three in and three out. Heat the pad, not the solder, then add a small dollop of solder to each pad, just enough to cover the metallic surface. Prepping the pads this way means that you won't have to add solder while wiring, just reflow and allow the solder to bond with your prepped wires. We're using jumper wires to make our initial connections. It would have been easier if I had a roll of jumper wire, but these segments will do the trick. Just strip twist, and tin. These will be the wires that we'll use to connect almost all the pads, and we don't want them too flexible or they might short, so make sure they're fully tinned without leaving excess solder hanging from the wire. Now, pair up your LED ring segments and let's solder the out pads on one segment to the in pads on the next. Position your wires, then reflow the solder on one ring and flatten the jumper wire onto the pad. With the wire connected, bridge the gap to the corresponding pad on the next segment, reflow that solder, flatten the wire, and let it cool. Once solid, use angle snips to clip off the excess. If you're having trouble keeping your ring in alignment, you can put the segments into the ring assembly upside down to hold them in place while you solder. Connect the pads on each pair of segments so you have two half circles. To these circles, we're going to attach silicone wire leads for linking the pairs, as well as linking the entire ring to power, the Arduino, and the rest of our WS2812 string. I'm using three colors of 30 gauge silicone wire for the connections that need length or flexibility. The bottom of the ring only needs one or two inches of slack since these wires will join your two half circles, which will be right next to each other, while the tops of the rings will need at least 12 inches. They must run around the ring to the other LEDs or down into the base to connect to the Arduino or power. Be generous with the wires that you measure out. It's easier to cut short rather than to resolder. Cut, strip, and tin. As before, line up your wire, reflow the solder, and push it onto the pad. I'm soldering these leads in the opposite direction of my jumpers because they'll be pushed up against the divider, and it's easier to access this way. Once you're done with soldering, loosely run your silicone wires into the rat holes in the ring assembly. The assembly has dividers at the top and bottom of the ring to guide placement. On the bottom, the part of the LED ring with the shorter silicone wires, thread the wires down into the rat hole, across the divider, and up into the adjacent rat hole. Now solder to the pads on the other half circle. Once that job is done, snap the two half circles into the ring assembly. The fit should be tight, tight enough to hold the ring without adhesives. Remember that the wires on the left side of the ring are your input, while the ones on the right side are your output. Give your work a once over to make sure that there are no bridge pads, then, if you so desire, connect to power and an Arduino with some WS2812 code to test your handiwork. Set aside your completed ring assembly, then let's get to work on the LED arrays that will display hours and minutes. First up, minutes. We're using three 10 packs of individual WS2812 LEDs. Our holders have been designed to exactly fit these WS2812 packages, so snap off the number that you need and insert them into the frames. 
The fit should be tight enough to hold the LEDs without adhesive. Here's an important note. If you don't want to resolder your job later, take a close look at the back of the LED modules. We want all our LEDs to have their arrows in the same direction. We're setting up the array to count starting on the lower right corner and going up before going back down to the next row and so forth. We need the arrows to be in the same direction instead of snaking back and forth. Furthermore, remember that you'll be soldering these LEDs upside down. So if we want our count to start on the lower right side, we need to remember that when the holder is flipped for soldering, the input pad is actually on the lower left side and the output pad is on the upper right side. Now that we know which way we're soldering, let's go ahead and tin our pads. You really don't want too much solder as we're dealing with a lot of connections in a very small area and it's easy to bridge pads with excess solder or slag. The other thing to remember is that we only need to daisy chain the data pads. We can go straight across for power as it doesn't matter which way the power feeds. As we did with our LED ring, we're using jumper wire to wire the rows. Since these are exposed jumper wires, be very careful about keeping each row straight. Also, we'll be adding the backing to the LED module in a bit, so don't let the power line stray too wide or they'll interfere with the fit. This is what my semi-prepared array looks like. I haven't connected the rows, but I have connected power across the LEDs and daisy chained the data pads out to in. With that done, snap on the backing. Not only will the backing keep the LEDs from popping out if there's a strong impact against the array, but it will also help to keep any shorts from developing across rows. Next, we need to connect the rows, 5 volt to 5 volt, ground to ground, data out to data in. I'm using jumper wire for the power and silicone wire for the data. You can use any pads for power, but remember that you want to keep the first in pads and the last out pads for connecting to the rest of the LED array. We're eventually going to connect the power and data lines going out from the LED ring to the in pads on this minute array, and we want to keep that pattern going. Cut, strip, and tin about 8 inches of 30 gauge silicone wire and solder to the out pads. That's an X9 array, and we need two of those, one for minutes and one for hours. Thankfully, the process is exactly the same, just rinse and repeat for the LED array that will represent hours. The X6 array, which represents minutes times 10, is easier, as it only has two rows. Follow the same procedure, tinning all the pads, then connecting the power pads straight across and the data pads in a daisy chain. Then, as with the X9 array, use jumpers to connect power between rows and silicone to connect the data pads. As before, cut, strip, and tin about 8 inches of silicone wire, then solder one end to the out pads on the X6. The last array is the X2, which will represent hours times 10. It's the easiest of the arrays to complete because it's just two LEDs with no rows. Tin the pads, then connect power across and daisy chain the data pads. We don't need a line from the data out pad on the X2 since it's the end of the string of LEDs, but we do need power lines. Cut, strip, and tin about 12 inches of 30 gauge wire, then connect to the power out pads. These won't be going to another LED array. Instead, they're going back down into the base to connect to our power supply, giving us two power paths for our string of LEDs. That will ensure that any LED always has enough power, no matter its location in the string. So it's not nice. all that complicated, really. I mean, again, no. uh, yeah, there's extremely... Time-consuming, but it's not extremely complicated, no. Yeah, and it's nothing that we haven't done before. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like all those strips of LEDs that we've been playing with, except you have to make the connections between the individual LEDs. It's a little bit of a pain, but if you take your time, not too big of a deal. Yeah, and that, that whole thing of using the jumper wire, stripping out the insulation and using it as a solid flat line, yeah. that speeds it up so much because it means you only have to daisy chain the data pads in, mm -hmm. uh, out to in, out to in, out to in, and right across the power pads, you just put one line. Because it doesn't matter which pad the WS2812 gets power on as long <laughs> as it gets power and ground on one of the four. Okay, and props to you on that video because it is oddly satisfying watching the soldering like happen. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I've, I've learned to like the smell of the smoke. <laughs> it's probably not a good it's thing. It's probably not good. No, you shouldn't yeah, Some do people that. have fans to exhaust it away. I have fans that exhaust, that blow it into my face. <laughs> <Just> <laughs>
<laughs> You're not going to be here for much longer, are you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm, I'm pretty much done. Yeah. yeah. yeah <laughs> After I've, this project. I've killed myself. Okay, so what we want to do, though, is we're going to go ahead and show you some of the finished products of putting mm -hmm. that together. Of course, we've, we've got an example of what it looks like when it's done. But uh, we, I did actually assemble a few extra modules because I think Kara wants a clock and you want a clock. Mm -hmm. And then I'm getting the super special clock. Super special clock. Yeah. Of course, you'd save the best for yourself. Well, yeah. I thought you were going to give me the good clock. Oh, um, yeah, you're getting the good clock. You one. said... Uh, lies. Whatever. Kara, she's, Kara's going to get the prototype clock. I mean, that's kind of cool, right? There's only one prototype. Mm -hmm. Whatever, I can't make this, so <laughs> I'll take what I can get. Just having a clock at all is yeah. cool. Uh, when we come back, we're going to go ahead and take a look at how we test these things, just to make sure that they're actually working, because I have actually soldered things backwards before, or I've bridged. Uh, thankfully, I've it's, never done that it's before. It's low voltage, so you're not going to blow anything up, but uh, we'll take a look right after these messages. There's another mesh networking game in town this week. Samsung is set to release its Connect Home smart Wi-Fi system. It has a SmartThings hub built in and will sell for $170 or $380 for a pack of three. The Wi-Fi network has been available in select locations all month, but will release nationwide on July 16th. We expect several high-profile tech companies to release quarterly earnings this week, including Netflix, IBM, Microsoft, Qualcomm, T-Mobile, and eBay. And finally, San Diego Comic-Con happens this week. Costumed comic book and movie fans will descend on the city in droves. Porter says many outlets, including The Walking Dead, have decided not to throw pricey parties this year, but much fun and cosplay will still be had, at least for those of us watching from Instagram. Those are just a few of the stories that Jason Howell and I will be following this week on Tech News Today, every weekday, Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific. We'll see you there. And we are back. Okay, Brian, so here we have on the table, mm -hmm. these are some of the modules that we've assembled. So, of course, this is this is the LED ring. Uh, you'll notice I have two sets of leads. This is right. in. This side is in. This side is out. So, and you know that because of... Right. Well, right. just because if you look if you look at the individual, individual segments, mm. if you pop these out, like so, they actually say D in, D out. Uh, I see. So yeah. this is the outside, and that is the inside which means that is in, that is out. Got it, got okay. it. You just need to know that because it's not going to blow anything if you right. put it reversed, but it won't light up. Okay, okay. and that would uh, suck. Yeah, it would suck. So this, uh, we've got two sets of wires, so what's going to happen is when I wire up my frame, mm -hmm. this, which is the out, it's going to go down, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, uh, it's actually going to um, uh, connect to the minutes and the hours array. So that's, okay. that's how the ground, that's how those arrays get their data. Makes sense. This part, is, is actually going to link up to the other ring. So I'm going to be giving power to both sides of these. Remember, that was one of the design choices. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to give any LED in the ring full power no matter where it is in the ring. Right. This is a problem with WS2812 sometimes, which is if you push full brightness down the line, mm -hmm. by the time it gets to the end... It's dim. It's dim, and it's it's like off-colored. Have you ever seen it like go brown or orange? Right. I think we talked about that when we were uh, describing making a really big yeah. LED array. Like yep. if you are going to do you know, a grid or whatever, you'd want to power it from the top and the bottom and then converge in the middle. Yeah, and we're going to be talking about the, the power considerations because there, there was actually thought that was put into uh, and how we designed our, um, our LED segments. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there's, there's math. There's math involved. <laughs> math. Which we will get to when we assemble the base, because the okay. base is where the power supplies are actually located. Okay. Now, this part is uh, relatively simple, because it's a ring. These are the ones that were a pain. These the are, pitas. These are the pitas. So the individual. This is our my X6, so this is going to be minutes times 10. Mm -hmm. This is connected to the top, so this is my hours, and this one is my hours times 10. So if you look at my circuit diagram, uh, we'll, again, we'll be we'll putting, putting this in the show notes so you can actually see it. But the way it's going to work is I go from the LED ring to the minute ring to the minute times 10 ring mm -hmm. to the hour ring to the, to hours, the hour times, times 10, 10 ring. That okay, makes so, sense. And remember, because WS2812 is actually a string. So right. I start off with LED zero right here. Mm -hmm. It's going to go all the way around the ring. Then it's going to go into the minutes, mm -hmm. minutes times 10, hours 
hours times 10. And the reason you want to do that in that order is that the programming is made specifically for that. Precisely. It, <laughs> you now, won't be able to t count time otherwise. You could do a different order, but you then could. you'd have to change the code to adjust which lights up where. Right. My code, the code that I'm going to be giving you in the show notes, is designed to go seconds, minutes, minutes times 10, hours, hours mm -hmm, times 10. Because mm -hmm. if you're imagining these, instead of being broken up into little compartments, just it's yeah. a long line. It's a really long line. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just don't. Don't do that. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what it takes to test these. Now, I've got an Arduino here, a little Nano, that's been loaded up to, to push a little demonstration to nine LEDs. Okay. So I'm going to use this individual segment. That's why it's, it's still separate. Um, I've, I've got my wire soldered onto this. These are my in wires, so that's my digital in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hook up power. I need my ground wire, mm -hmm. like so. And uh, I made some. I made alligator clips just to make it a little easier for us to hook up this demonstration. Then I need my five volts, like so. Mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. stay on, data. and then data. And so if we turn this over, there we go. So now it's displaying a little animation pattern on this little X9 array. Nice. Okay. Uh, but of course, we do want to test more than this, right? We do. We we need, uh, you actually want to test all of these bits before, <laughs> before you start snapping on like the diffuser because if you if you need to throw it away, right? Uh, you don't want to have to destroy the diffuser. Or yeah, you figure out that you miswired something yeah. or something which, shorting, yeah. which is super super easy. <laughs> uh, but what I would suggest is if you have a magnifying glass after you're done, go through and just make sure because those pads are really close to each other. Right. There can't be any stray solder, not even a little teeny tiny blob that touches, that shorts out pads. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, what will happen is like some lights will light up and some lights won't. So you're saying audience members who've done the steampunk goggles should put down their little magnifying glasses, put the steampunk goggles on, and well, look at the solder joints? What you should do is you should build the steampunk goggles so that you can have <laughs> Just a for that reason, loop, yeah. Because that's the best, it's the most practical way <laughs> like that. to have a magnifier. All right, but let's go ahead and, so we know this X9 works. Let's go ahead and test something else. Let's test our 60 LED ring. Again, remember, we know that our input is on this side right. and our output is on that side. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, actually, wait, which side is which again? <laughs> <sighs> I think it's, it's clockwise, so I'm pretty sure you're right. Yeah, I was right. I was right. Okay, so uh, again, uh, that's in. Mm -hmm. So those are the lines. So we're going to feed it power. So if you're going with my little special alligator wires. clips, Oops. there we go. That's pos that's or ground. Clockwise. Here's positive, and let's give it some data. And, oh, as soon as I can get this to go, there is no so. really good way to do this. By the way, this is just sort of mess. Okay, so there we have it. Nice. If you go uh, to the overhead, so I'm lighting up nine LEDs right now. But of course, I want more than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the code, so it does sixty. Let's upload that. It's going to have to recompile and then upload the code. And if I did this right, we'll see the entire 60 LED ring light up. And, and this should be enough power to, for all of them, right? Because we don't have all these LEDs hooked up together. Precisely. And it's, it's for a very short time. So yeah, it might heat up, but it's not going to kill it. And there we go. So now I know that all of my LEDs are active. And actually, this is a super important step, even for the 60 LED ring, hmm. uh, because I did receive one LED ring that had a bad LED. Oh, that would be so frustrating. Yeah, you know, if you if you wait until I mean, even if you like you just test, like, oh yeah, it's getting signal. Yeah. It was right there. Oh. And I, I was actually able to fix it. It was just a cold solder joint. But oh, cool. imagine assembling the entire clock and then having to disassemble it and then just uh, desolder everything just so you could get to that one ring. That yeah, was that, would be that was so annoying. test your stuff before you put it all together. This is pretty by the way, Brian. It is. I, see I like just the ring. There's probably a lot of projects that people can do just yeah, with wait, that. Wait, Carrie, bring down the lights. Let's let's get a little light show let's going get a on here. Party going on. Dun 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 dun. It's like you could put one of uh, oh, put this around your face so it's like a steampunk face. Go to my single. <laughs> it's like I'm back in Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that actually does look really good. Wait, wait, wait till the animation pattern shifts because we want to see you with a sparkle. The sparkle? That, oh, that looks. I don't know about this. Man. I don't know. We could probably do something cool with that though. <sighs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me wait, wait, wait. And sparkle. That's just creepy. Yeah. <laughs> that will haunt your nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we need to stop that right now because the audience is freaking out right now. <laughs> the audience well, is now good. scared. Okay, so let's go ahead and test the others because we want to make sure that our, uh, our other X9, the X6, and the X2 are working as well. These I've already soldered together, 
And I can use the same code because it, it will do 60, even though there's not 60 LEDs here. There's, there's actually only, what, 15, 16, 17. Mm -hmm. uh, my in is actually on this side. So what I need to do is I need to solder this pad to so those pads one. in order to, to get this. So a okay. little real-time demonstration. I already have my out lead soldered here. So all I should have to do is connect this. Now, this is the advantage of pre-tinning all your pads, because it means I don't even need solder. I can just use the solder that is already on the pad. I just reflow it, like so. And it's hat pushed down on the wire. Yeah. Takes a little time. The first joint's a little, little persnickety. There you go. All right. And let me... Oop, that, that, that is shorted. <laughs> it's easy to yeah. do. There we go. And then let's do the data wire. Like so. The question is though, Padre, as this clock counts down, which wire do you cut? Is it the red wire? It's always the white wire. It's always the white wire. Okay, good. Yeah, if, if folks, if you ever find a bomb that I've designed, cut the white wire. <laughs> oh God, he's playing mind games though. I, I really shorted this. And now you're burning the and table. Oh. <laughs> Just a brine brat. Oh, that's a wonderful smell. Mm, the smell of foam. Mouse pad I love foam. the smell of neoprene in the morning. It's okay. That mouse pad's seen worse. I've seen my soldering. Okay. And then we need power. Now, I could connect this, because uh, I'm not actually looking really closely at this. Normally, I'd be really close and I'd have a magnifying glass. But hopefully... The soldering gods will be with us. Smitty, the, my spirit animal, will protect us. <laughs> Your Patronus. My Patronus. No pressure. Everyone's watching. Smitty okay, is looking that's down That's the on worst you. connection, but I think it's going to work. So what <laughs> I should have to do is I should have to connect power. That's okay. my 5 volts right there. All right. So I need ground, which is right here. Makes it a little difficult when they're the same color. Well, I didn't have a third color, so. Yeah. And then I need data. And here we go. Oh, snap. Oh, snappy, snippy, snap. Right. Well, unfortunately, it's the wrong animation pattern. It's the one that's the hardest to see. But there we go. Ah. So now I, I know all of my light arrays are working. So I've got my minutes, my minutes times 10, my hours, my hours times 10. I know that since my LED ring is working, that once I connect the string, everything will work. I just don't want to do it right now because right. it's going to overwhelm the power that the Nano can provide. Right, right, right. Cool. Okay. Good to know that they're all working. And this is why, this is the real reason why I put the animation pattern in there is because it's the best way to test all the lights. Other... <laughs> Instead of waiting for the time to go through? <laughs> just yeah. adjusting the lights individually. Yeah. By the way, we didn't show people that. This is, so this is how you set time. Kara figured this out all by herself, by the way, which... It's, it's good because Clever girl. Burke didn't. Really? <laughs> yeah, if you brought, if you go ahead and bring the lights down. So the way it works is this first button changes mode. So this is regular time mode. When it goes rainbow ring, it's now time set mode. Mm -hmm. And this first button allows you to change the hour. Nice. See? So what time is it? The, uh, 7.32. So it's 19. So it has to look like that. And okay. then when you, when you uh, change mode again, this is going to save time to the real-time clock and change to the animation mode. Cool. Uh, hold on. Wait, not, not your face. No, not again. Uh, nightmare fuel. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, chat room. OK, He's done. Watching. enough of that. That's done. We're done with that. But there we go. <laughs> That's how we solder this thing together. Not bad, not too bad. So all in all, what do you think? Like 45 minutes to solder all that together? If, Realistically, if you weren't recording it? yeah, 45 minutes to an hour. I mean, if you're good. If, if, uh, once you get into a rhythm, mm -hmm. uh, I, mean, I mean, like, for example, soldering the, uh, the little dollops, yeah, the, that literally takes you about a minute for every one of you. Just go bop, bop, boop, bop, boop, bop, boop, bop, boop, bop. And once the solder's down there, laying down the individual wires mm -hmm. becomes a whole lot easier because you're not like trying to hold the iron, the, uh, the item, and the solder at the same time. Right. Uh, what I would suggest is to get yourself one of those little uh, non-conductive wire sticks. It's basically uh, like a poker mm -hmm. that has a notch so it will actually hold the wire. It makes it so much easier to poke the wire and then hold it where you want it to be. And then... You're not burning your fingers and it stays <laughs> in the right place. <laughs> Sounds less dangerous. It does. Uh, people might want to try that. Yeah, yeah. The other thing to remember about this is uh, before you apply power, this is 
the same for any project that you might want to do. Always recheck your, uh, your solder, recheck your wiring, because it gets very easy for you to accidentally flip stuff around. Like okay. at one point, I had uh, connected all the wires, but in a ring <laughs> with no power. Right. Uh, and then I was like, why isn't this working? I'm like, oh, yeah, that, I'll do it. Do you have any tips for people on length of wire between each component? Like, Yes. So I always do excess. The way I design the frame, this is an old design of the frame we've got down here, but the new one, uh, you can solder everything before you put it into uh, the little the channels. Yeah. Uh, and the way I've designed the frame is there's a lot of extra space beneath the individual rays and inside the, the, the cable channel. So what mm -hmm. I would say is err on the side of long. Okay. Because long you can hide, short you have to resolder. There's mm, just there's no way pain. around it. Yeah, and silicone wire is cheap. Yes. So you know if you've got three four inches of excess wire, all it's going to do is make it easier for you to install or fix later on. Cool. All yeah. right. Fun project. One last bit. Uh, what? Because I did this the yeah. first time. Um, remember, everything you're soldering is backwards. Backwards. How? Because you solder like this, but you see the LEDs like that. Oh, So the I first see what time I saying. soldered it, I made that zero LED. And you're like, no, wait, it's, yeah, that it's, wouldn't make sense. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's so simple, mm -hmm. and, but if you don't listen to me, you're probably gonna do it, because remember, this only goes one way. It goes from digital in to out, in right. to out, in to out. So you, when you're soldering, you're going right to left. No, so, so when you're soldering, you're going right. left to right. Left to right. When it's displaying, it's going right to left. Right to left. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's Oof. that's actually kind of important. Um, what I actually had to do is I had to go back in. I had to swap all of these little connections I made. Oh. I had to go the other way. Oh no! Uh, don't be me. Don't be. Don't, don't Learn be. from Padre. Learn from Pa. Don't be Padre. Don't be Padre. Don't be Padre. Don't be padre. Uh, but this is a cool project, and, and what I like about this is, especially this part. Because we now have this template made, mm -hmm. and we know exactly how big it needs to be to exactly hold those WS-2812 parts, we are going to be able to use that in anything. Nice. Uh, including, you had this the, the bright idea of putting some LEDs actually into the base. Yeah, I was thinking the base either to illuminate upwards or even maybe an LED pointing down so that you can see the buttons. Yeah. Or yeah, put like a translucent uh, material by the button so you can see it in the dark. Yeah, yeah. Be cool. Yeah. Now next week, folks, we're gonna take what we just created. We're just gonna take the rig, not the base, and we're gonna show you how to code it. Uh, because it's, it's simple. It's, you know, it's not super complicated, but it's, uh, it's something that you can play with. If you understand the code, you can actually modify it. Some people didn't like the 24-hour format. You can actually make this a different style of format. You can make it a 12-hour clock instead of a 24-hour clock mm -hmm. just by changing the code. And we're going to be covering that all next week. Nice. Yeah. nice. So look forward to it. Uh, we know that this was a lot of information, and we don't want you to copy everything down from uh, what you <laughs> see. So we're going to give you step-by-step -step at our show notes. And Brian, where do they find those? You can find those over at twit.tv slash kh. And yeah, like Padre said, you're going to want to download this episode because you'll probably want to pause it, take a close look at, at how we soldered things up, and then press play. Uh, and we also, this is a multi-part episode, so yep. you'll want to subscribe if you haven't already. Yeah, and don't forget that we also have a place on the socials. It's a really good place to, to ask questions, to answer questions, maybe to meet some of your fellow know-howers, your key does. Mm -hmm. And you're going to find that at Google+. Plus. Just look for the know-how group, ask to join. There's a very short approval process, so we can keep out all the spam accounts. But once you're in, you get access to over 11,000 Kitas, your fellow know-howers, who are going to be able to answer questions, who are going to be maybe giving you ideas for future projects. Mm -hmm. And it's also the best place to post pictures and videos of the projects that you made so we can show them off on our show. We are very proud of our Kitas. We're proud of what you it's make. And we love to show off the things that you create. Somebody has already uh, outdone us a bit on the, the steampunk, steampunk goggles. Yeah. They customized it for, I think, their daughter, and they were mm -hmm. doing like a camp the, the thing. First, the, that was the first robotics competition. Ah, uh, that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, so go ahead and find that again. Go to Google Plus and just look for know how. That's right, but uh, that's not the only place you can find us on the internet. We're also on Twitter, and that's where we post pictures when we're doing projects behind the scenes. Burning or Burning holes in our maker mats. Yes, burning holes in maker mats or failing to wire things properly. That's where you'll find that stuff. And I am on Twitter at Cranky underscore Hippo. And you can find me at Twitter at Padre SJ. And we've actually got a third member of our crew tonight. That's right. Miss Kara Cole. Kara. Kara. Yes. Tell the people, impress them with your responsibilities here at Twit. Oh, mostly I reap the rewards of this show. Like, I get free clocks and other toys that Padre makes for me. 
Um, but I also substitute TD sometimes and produce and engineer, camera operate. We love Kara. I do it all. And where did they find you on Twitter? Oh, yeah, at Kara080. There you go. Mm -hmm. Until next time, I am Father Robert Balliser. I'm Brian Burnett. And now that you know how, go build it. Solder it together. <laughs> but test it before you put it together. Go build it.